Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting for Tuesday, January 23rd. Uh, I am Todd Wilchin. I am the chair of the county board this year. Um, fellow commissioners, uh, Deb Shore and Bill Avery, um, should be joining us momentarily. Uh, I think they're running behind due to traffic and the road conditions. Uh, on my right, fellow commissioners, uh, Rome Amundsen and Vice Chair Jennifer Brinkman. Uh, joining us this morning from the county attorney's office uh, is Jennifer Holloway. Uh, from the county clerk's office, we have the county clerk, Dan Nolte, and Kelly Lundgren. Uh, from the county board office, we have our chief administrative officer, Carrie Egan, and our chief deputy administrative officer, Ann Ames. Now, if you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if you'd please start the agenda. Copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act is located on the wall at the rear of the hearing room. Additionally, a copy of all written material to be discussed at today's open meeting is available from the county clerk staff at the front of the hearing room. The material can also be viewed on the county's website at lancaster.ne.gov. Agenda item one or minutes, approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held on Tuesday, January 16th, 2018. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from our last Board of Commissioners meeting. Any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number two are claims, approval of all claims processed through January 23rd, 2018. Move approval of the claims. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve all the claims processed through today. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Number three is a special presentation. Introduction of Walter Brewer, candidate for appointment as Lancaster County Liaison to the Library Board of Lincoln City Libraries, Pat Leach, Lincoln City Libraries Director. Morning, members of the... Stand in front of the mic. Oh, this one over here. Yep. Sorry. That works. Members of the County Board, my name is Herb Friedman. I'm president of the Lincoln Library Board of Trustees. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our nominee, at least, our, uh, Walt Brewer, to serve as the county representative on our board. Mr. Brewer? Any questions, I would be happy to answer. Ms. Brewer, if you want to introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Herb, Chairman Wilkin, members of the commission. I appreciate being here. And it's quite an honor to stand here before you on such an occasion. I want to thank the selection committee for nominating my <clears throat> appointment to this position, which I am so looking forward to. A uh, little background on myself. I'm, in, I'm a native of uh, Beatrice, Nebraska. However, I was quite young when we moved to Lincoln, so I called Lincoln home. I'm a general contractor and have been all my life. I've been a <clears throat> We built a lot of structure in the city of Lincoln, throughout the state of Nebraska, and uh, and elsewhere. Um, married, have th three children, eight grandchildren, and uh, very much enthused about the city of Lincoln and Lancaster County in itself. Uh, since I have done, done a lot of structures throughout the county, I know the county well, and I know a lot of people within the county, being in the field that I'm in. And so, consequently, I am looking forward to this appointment. Any questions? I would be happy to try, not try to answer them. Um, any question for Mr. Brewer? Brewer, yeah, wrong O. <laughs> um, Commissioner Short. Particular interest in the libraries? Are you a reader, family readers? I'm a reader, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm an ardent fan of reader. I don't get to read as much as I uh, usually like to, but I have read a lot, a lot of specifications, I think, over the years. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I do want to thank us, have a special thank you for Pat and, and uh, Herb Friedman uh, being on the committees for the selection department. Uh, Commissioner Avery. You're welcome. Uh, didn't you serve on the board previously or are you currently on the board? Well, no, I'm on the building advisory committee at the moment, uh, Mr. Avery. And uh, 
was selected, but I'm outside of the city limits. <laughs> I remember reading your resume. You were a foster parent to 14 children? Yes, my wife and I, my, my, my wife is, a, is an orphan from New York uh, originally, and uh, very keen on orphans. Uh, we do quite a lot of things civically. Uh, we've been a, quite of, uh, active in the, the Lincoln Symphony, uh, a lot of to, to do with dance and, uh, and the arts, opera, the quilts and go on and on. Our foster program has been something that we've done for many, many, many years. Uh, now recently, of course, but we did raise 14 foster children in addition to our own uh, children. And uh, we are also very deeply involved as a construction company in the prisoner release work program. And currently we have one of the members uh, working for us around the yard. We have a little horse ranch out on the southwest part of town. And uh, we're very keen on all, and anything civic. I served on the Lincoln uh, Building Advisory Committee for I think some 25 years here before it was uh, uh, not re reinstated again. So I have been involved quite a bit in the, in the governmental agency. I'm a former lobbyist. I was the executive director for Associated General Contractors, Nebraska Building Chapter for six years after I retired for about the 10th time. <laughs> and I'm still, we're still active doing projects. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, Commissioner Amundsen. I just really don't have any questions, but I do have a comment. You know, we're really fortunate to have you on the board. But pardon your, me? We, will, we are going to be really fortunate to have you on the library board. You have such wide expertise, such wide interest and activities. And so well, we really I appreciate, appreciate that very much, and thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, and I agree. I want to thank you for your continued public service mm -hmm. to the county and to the city. Thank, thank you. you. Um, any other questions? Okay, Mr. Clerk, would you please uh, see the uh, agenda item number 4A? This is under new business appointment of Walter Brewer as the Lancaster County Liaison to the Library Board of the Lincoln City Libraries for a seven year term. I move that uh, Walter Brewer be appointed as the Lancaster County Liaison to the Library Board. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second to appoint Walter Brewer. Um, any uh, discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Hammondson? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Next is 4B, Comprehensive Plan Conformance Number 17016, in a matter of adopting the one and six year. Road and Bridge Construction Program for Lancaster County Fiscal Years 2018 and 2019 through 2023. Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. So as you're aware, it's been, I think, about eight weeks now since we met and had the one in six. Uh, as time has proceeded, uh, I bring before you the matter of adopting the one in six. However, you may note a couple of things on there. The primary thing is that I'm switching out 98th Street and putting it in years uh, two through six and replacing that project in next year's plan with 54th Street. Um, I did cite my reasons for that in my letter. However, for the public and the rest of the people here today, the main, some of the main reasons are, uh, and it kind of fits overall with the philosophy at which I have taken county engineering forward and said, let's stop grading roads if we're not going to have the funds to pave them right away. And so 98th Street was graded in 2006. There are a number of regulations design-wise that have changed since then. In addition to that, there's a floodplain and floodway that have been platted adjacent to 98th Street. So because of that, um, that affects our drainage structures and requires us to do some pretty extensive modeling um, with, uh, with the stormwater flows through there in conjunction with stormwater management. And uh, as, we, as the city requested us to shift uh, the pavement uh, 10 feet off of the center line, we also have an obstacle clearance problem with a number of those drainage structures uh, as well as uh, as some vertical curve problems due to uh, design changes in uh, standards and protocol. So um, I'm kind of sad about it, uh, but I don't feel that we should rush that project to construction without having all of these things taken care of, and, and these things are gonna take some time. 
So, uh, so I have pushed that project to, uh, to FY19, uh, and we'll go ahead and work on uh, 54th Street next year. I did also want to address, we had a number of citizens that came forward with concerns about West A. And I agree, uh, humbly agree with every single one of them that it makes the most sense to join the city and uh, construct through the intersection. However, that being said, we simply don't have the funding um, in the next five years uh, with our current, with the way our funding is currently laid out to do that project. And so uh, I have spoke to the city about it as well as the citizen who brought it forward and was very concerned about it. And uh, I, I, I guess I don't, uh, he, he, he is aware of our situation, so I, I don't want you to think that I'm leaving anyone hanging out there thinking that that project was gonna be added in that two through six. Are there any other questions? Commissioner Schwartz. What's the estimated cost of that project? I'm sorry, estimated cost of the West Day? You know, I would really kind of just be shooting from the hip. Um, if I was to throw out a price, the city would really like us to construct a traffic circle there. Uh, and then transition the pavement in either direction um, back from the width of a traffic circle. My initial thoughts from looking at it was that it was probably around seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of work. But again, I am I'm really shooting from the hip. Mm -hmm. It would require right away and storm drainage and, and several other things, so it would be quite extensive. Commissioner Brinkman, talk a little bit about the Southwest Second project that was not listed in any of the one and six lists we saw for the hearing and is now going to be done this year. Well, uh, you, you may be a fan of the Southwest Second project when I tell you what the deal is with it. So uh, in conjunction with the NRD and the NCRS, there is a dam located, um, located near Southwest Second Street. In fact, Southwest Second Street, when the dam was originally built, was kind of relocated. Um, because it didn't, it, because we would have been taking part of it up a dam embankment, um, and it, it didn't meet standards. And so the NRD uh, is going to reconstruct that dam. It, it has some issues right now, and when they reconstruct it, the road uh, won't meet any modern criteria of which we could get a design waiver for from um, the NDOT. So we're going to change the alignment of that road. We have supplied the design for that road um, to the NRD. And in conjunction with that, they are going to um, purchase the right of way for that and build the road. So that is a no cost to the county project. So that leads me to another question, which is that if uh, we are taking 98th Street off this coming construction season, which was estimated at around $1.5 million, mm -hmm. and that in adding South 54th Street, which is estimated at a million, why can't we set aside 500,000 to talk about West Day? Um, well, thank you for that question, Commissioner Brinkman. If you're to go back and you're to look at the object codes in my budget, which is really drilling down to the details, you might notice under the um, object code of bituminous pavement, also known as asphalt, uh, that the budget line item number is $188,000 there. So in order to get to where we were going to even be able to do 54th Street or 98th Street, uh, going forward, what I had to do was cut uh, some right away that I wanted to buy for future projects during this current year and to cut a number of design projects and uh, engineering studies. And so we're struggling just to come up with the $1 million. Um, what I had, how we were going to go forward with 98th Street is with an alternate bid, two miles and then one mile as the alternate uh, bid. Should we be able to squeeze enough of our other projects to get to get uh, to get that out of it? But uh, it was it was always iffy uh, whether we were going to be able to get to that third mile of 98th Street because of the $188,000 in the bi bituminous pavement object code. Um, I'm going to go back and talk about the South 98th Street because I think this was something that we've been talking about for quite some time. I know that there were a lot of people that were living in this area that were looking forward to having South 98th Street um, paved this year. Um, can you talk, because you didn't mention earlier um, the issues surrounding the Mopac trail crossing. Because oh, in, in conversations that I've had, that's I think another issue that's come up since we had the one in six hearing eight weeks ago. 
Um, that is true. I did uh, I did leave that off my my list. So I do have a letter from uh, Lincoln Parks requesting that the Mopac Trail in the area of 98th Street be relocated. Um, I have told uh, the Parks Department I have some concerns about that because I don't want this trail crossing to appear urban in any way. Uh, we have a number of other crossings as the trail goes east um, that, that cross at a diagonal. Uh, I also believe that at this location, the trail is not uh, Lincoln City Parks jurisdiction, but an NRD jurisdiction issue. And so um, Parks has concerns about that. Um, you know, it, and this is part, part of the issue that has made 98th Street so complex for construction is that it really is, um, I'm going to call it a little past the urban fringe. Um, I'm surprised that it didn't show up in all the recent annexations. Uh, to, to be pulled into the city because it is really an urban corridor. And so the request and some of the things that are going on with it are really things we see in the urban environment. Um, to straighten the trail and, and look at it, that really isn't something that my organization, um, I believe, should, should get into. Uh, not that I'm not pro-trail, but that I believe our main concern, especially with our limited funding, needs to be our bridges uh, and, our, and our paved roads and the maintenance of those facilities. So um, that's just one more complex thing. I do know that in the overall planning um, of subdivisions in the area that the trail will be relocated in the future, um, in, in particular in the A Street corridor just, uh, just north of where the current crossing is on 98th Street. And so um, I think there's some overall planning that needs to be done here. And, and uh, I'm going to say I don't think the planning is Lancaster County Engineering's departments. So going back to your earlier comment, you think that we'll be able to resolve all the issues, or I should say you would be able to resolve <laughs> all the issues with the design structures involving the cross section as well as the drainage structures as well as the trail crossing and have it all done next year? Um, I would be hopeful uh, of that, that we can resolve those issues. Um, again, as, as this corridor continues to be closer and closer to urban development and actually has several pieces of it that are now within a preliminary plat um, for urban development, I think there will continue to be additional design issues. And, and how many, uh, what's the average daily count um, towards the south end um, it it has ebbed um, we have counted it the last two years I, I believe we have counts in the 720 cars per day any other questions okay I entertain a motion I will move approval of the uh, comprehensive plan conformance plan 17016 approval or a second I should say okay we have a motion and a second to approve the comprehensive plan conformance for the one and six road and bridge construction program for the county um, any discussion uh, Commissioner Brinkman I think going through this process is just uh, reiterated and made clearer to me the reason why we are engaging in a study over the next six months to talk about financing <coughs> for infrastructure in some cases it may be resources in some cases it may be prioritization and in others it might uh, have a relation to how we set up the funds that then result in how we prioritize these projects so i'm going to vote for this and want to reiterate that work on west a by the city is not anticipated to be done for another three or four years i know design and right-of-way acquisition takes time but i will continue to uh, advocate that we participate in that project in some way and I'll follow up on what Commissioner Brinkman said, is that going back a number of years, what Russ was designed to do, which is the rural to urban um, transit streets, transition streets, I mean, this is kind of highlights what the challenges we have in that on the fringe of the city where it, you have the county, there's a lot of infrastructure needs that um, need to be addressed. And I think it's time that we address them and hopefully find a, a solution to the challenges. So, um, any other? Okay, with that, um, Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? 
Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. C is a special de designated license application for Nebraska FFA Foundation for an event to be held on February 11, 2018 at Capitol View Winery and Vineyard, 2361 Whitsirk Road, Roka, Nebraska. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Sarah Mullen. I'm with the Nebraska FFA Foundation. I'm the development and marketing manager there. So they asked me to come and just tell you a little bit about the event um, we're hosting at Capital View Winery and Vineyards. This, um, we've hosted these events one other time um, in different counties, and so this is kind of this is how it ran last year. I'll give you an example. Um, the event will be held at from 6:30 to 8:30. We have um, participants that are pur will purchase tickets. Uh, those tickets will grant them 10 tasting tickets uh, at the door. The do there will be three wineries there um, donating tastings to us, so they will not be making any money off of their don They will be donating the tastings for us. Um, we will also be purchasing bottles of wines from those wineries and selling them um, at the event, so that's the, the reason we need the special designated license that day. We'll also have food appetizers there for our guests. Um, and it's really just a, a gathering of, of supporters of Nebraska FFA Foundation. With that, I would give you the opportunity to, to talk a little bit about the foundation, if sure. you'd like. Sure. Um, I don't know how many of you know what FFA is or um, we're involved with it, um, but it's a, a school-based um, organization for students um, with agricultural education. Um, it's in our schools. There's agriculture education classes as part of it. There's the FFA part, which is the leadership development, and then there's also supervised agricultural experiences that these students are, are part of, and those are experiences where these students can get hands-on learning. And so the FFA Foundation exists to support all three of those areas. Um, we support various activities, both at the statewide level, which you see here in Lincoln as State FFA Convention. The Blue Coats come to town every April. Um, there's also leadership workshops that they're hosting, and there's also support that we provide for the local FFA chapters through local chapter grants and different activities like that. Thank you, um, mm -hmm. Commissioner Avery. I am actually a former member of FFA yeah. many years ago. Um, and I don't remember that alcohol sales were ever part of our activities. How new is this? Uh, this is hosted by the FFA Foundation. So we're a completely separate organization from the association. But you exist for <coughs> FFA. Yes, we do. We, uh, so it's um, a lot of the guests there are alumni like yourself, that are coming to more network. Uh, we don't even have FFA members present at the events Okay. for that very purpose. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. I will move approval of the SDL for the Nebraska FFA. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the SDL for Nebraska FFA Foundation. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Before you leave, if people are interested in buying tickets, how would they go about doing that? <laughs> you can find them on our website at nefafoundation.org. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. 4D is a special designated license application for Junto Wine LLC for an event to be held on February 11, 2018 at Capitol. View Winery and Vineyard at 2361 Whitsirk Road, Roka, Nebraska. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? Um, well, we're obviously one of the wineries for the event, so um, we're uh, going to be attending and doing tastings and um, selling wine to them, obviously. So um, I think to answer your question that you had for her, Mr. Avery, uh, wineries and, and, and vineyards in Nebraska are kind of a new thing, um, but it is agro-tourism, and it's kind of a different uh, outlet of tourism for uh, uh, for for people in Nebraska, something that they can do that also includes agriculture. Uh, we like to consider ourselves farmers in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we're out there working in the vineyard, maintaining the vineyard, and then we have to turn that into a product, uh, which is wine. So it's really unique agriculture. It's a little different than corn and soybeans, but uh, it's kind of unique. But it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and I think there's a lot of future in wineries in the state. Um, could you introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. Uh, John Siebert. I'm with Junto uh, Winery. We're all by Seward. I, I assumed you were with the, with, the, with the vineyard, but 
I didn't know your name. So, yeah, sorry. Um, thank you. Um, any other questions? Yes. Um, Commissioner Avery? Are you fairly new? I don't yeah, think I've we open in, it'll be four years in May. We open in May of 2014. And you're in what county? Seward County. Seward County. Yep, between Lincoln and Seward. If you know where Garland is, kind of in the Garland yeah. area. Yep. They have a really nice party space. I've been out there for <laughs> Thank <you>. a <laughs> bridal shower. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Otherwise, I entertain a motion. Okay, approval. I move approval of the uh, SDL for Junto Wine. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the SDL for Junto Wine. Uh, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Is a maintenance agreement with Microfilm Imaging Systems, Inc. in the amount of $922 for a Canon scanner located in the Clerk of the District Court's office. Term of the agreement is February 1st, 2018 to January 31st, 2019. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the maintenance agreement with Microfilm Imaging Systems. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. F is an agreement between the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 2468, and Lancaster County for the contract term August 17th, 2017 through August 30th, 2018. Good morning, Commissioners. Doug McDaniel, Human Resources, bring this labor agreement to you for approval. It's a one year agreement with AFSME in Engineering. Uh, the economic impact is a 1.5% increase to wages. Um, questions, Commissioner Brinkman? So uh, having read the agreement for the first time and not having any text changes, there were no text changes beyond anything related to the wage increase, correct? There were some minor text changes related to the number of stewards, um, also a designation for um, the director. It was a carryover from the previous AFSME contract, and where AFSME was a much larger union, so there were two minor text changes that were non-economic. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Mr. McDaniel? Uh, Commissioner Avery? Uh, is it normal or usual that we have a one-year contract instead of a two in this case? Well, we always uh, seek to uh, get a two-year agreement if we can. Um, sometimes the parties can't agree on uh, <laughs> economic uh, um, uh, developments in the contract, and so therefore uh, um, we were able to get a one-year agreement, and that was the limitation. And one year agreement in this case was easier to reach? It's what the parties agreed to. Yeah. You sound like a lawyer. <laughs> uh, any other questions? <laughs> I'll remain silent to that. <laughs> Move approval of the agreement. Second. Okay, we have a Thank motion you. and a second to approve the uh, agreement with AFSME uh, <clears throat> Engineering. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. 4G is a recommendation from the purchasing department and emergency management to award a contract to Schmader Electric for an outdoor warning siren and installation. The cost of county is $26,975. I've got a, an 8.5 by 11 display I'd like to share with you that will give a, an idea of the sirens that have been added since late 2014. The siren that's before you today is going to be placed at Pioneers Park. The old siren behind the Pinewood Bowl stage had to be relocated due to some expansion and reconstruction they're doing out there. So it was an opportune time to remove that old siren and replace it with a brand new solar powered one. So that's what the, the uh, the item before you today, but if you can see the red triangles, those are the ones that have been added since 2014. The one at the top is at Raymond Central High School. Again, due to some construction out there, the old one had to be moved, so the, the first opportunity we had to buy a new one. And then kind of keep an, an idea to make sure we evenly distribute them among the county. After Raymond Central, we added one near 84th and Yankee Hill Road. Um, it's actually on property of St. Michael's Catholic Church. That gave us some coverage for a, a growing and developing area in southeast Lancaster County. The next two were both northeast. 
we added one at 52nd and Arbor Road due to a pretty substantial residential development there. The next one was at the Lancaster Event Center. The current event center property was just on the fringe of a lot of the sirens we had in the general area, looking to the near future, especially with the high school rodeo being out there in a couple of years. I took advantage of the opportunity to install a siren there last year, and then as I said, we needed to, to make a change at Pioneers Park, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the most five recent sirens, we've got a pretty good distribution among the county. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. David Saver? Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, award the contract for a new outdoor warning siren. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Avery? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. H is an accessory building agreement for <coughs> J. Corver Revocable Trust for Property General located at 17381 Pella Road. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the accessory building agreement. Um, any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Shore? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. Four eyes in agreement with the Lincoln Marriott Cornhusker Hotel to provide meeting room and services for the Lancaster County Employee Recognition Breakfast on May 22, 2018, including catering and service fees. The cost of the county is $17.08 per attendee. Move approval. Second. <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agreement with the Cornhusker Hotel. Um, any questions? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. J is a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Department of Interior, U.S. Geological Survey for joint funding of water resource investigations. The agreement is for the operation and computation of records for four stream flow gauging stations, which are Salt Creek, Little Salt Creek near Lincoln, Stevens Creek near Lincoln, and Rock Creek near Soresco. The county will pay $12,710 for the services. Term of the agreement is October 1st, 2017 through September 30th, 2018. Pam Dingman, Lancaster County Engineer. Um, these are gauges that are located in the major drainage ways that drain into our county. And for those of you who uh, may be Johnny Cash fans, uh, may remember the song, How High is the Water, right? So uh, you can actually go onto these gauge sites and sign up for text messages that will tell you when the water gets to whatever level you feel is of concern to you. Um, we use the gauge information uh, in the EOC to figure out when the water is coming and, and how deep it is. It has been extraordinarily helpful to the county in planning for flooding. And so if any of you um, would like to see the mobile site or see how it works, I would be happy to um, show it to you outside of the meeting. And if you'd like to get those texts every hour through the night when the county's flooding, um, you, you can do that. <laughs> any questions for Ms. Stingman? Move approval of the agreement. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the cooperative agreement with the U.S. Department of Interior, U.S. Geological Survey. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Avery? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries 5 to 0. K is an amendment to kind of contract C-17-357 with Constructors, Inc. for asphalt and resurfacing projects in 2017. The amendments extend the completion date from November 1st, 2017 to April 1st, 2018 due to circumstances beyond the control of the contractor. Move approval. Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract with constructors. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. L is a contract with Lincoln Digestive Health Center LLC for the specialized medical care of general assistance clients. The provider will be reimbursed at the Medicaid rate. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Lincoln Digestive Health Center. Any discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? 
Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Four M as an amendment amendment to county contract C dash thirteen dash three one six with Pepsi Cola for of Lincoln for vending services for Lancaster County and the Public Building Commission. The amendment is to add vending services to the K Street complex. Move approval. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the county contract with Pepsi Cola of Lincoln. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. For an as an amendment to county contract C-17-181 with Sunset Law Enforcement for the annual supply of ammunition. The amendment renews the contract for an additional one year term beginning March 7, 2018 through March 6, 2019. The cost of the county is not to exceed $45,000. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract with Sunset Law Enforcement. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. O is an amendment to county contract C-17-319 with Haworth Inc. using the U.S. Communities Contract Number 44 Zero 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 three four zero two for office furniture and related services. The amendment renews the contract from January first, two thousand eighteen, through December thirty first, two thousand eighteen. The estimated cost of the county is not to exceed twenty thousand dollars. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend the contract with Hayworth Inc. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Avery. Yes. Brinkman. Yes. Shore. Yes. Amundsen. Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. P is an amendment to county contract C-17-33 with Murphy Tractor and Equipment for Skid Steer Loader Rentals. The amendment renews the contract from February 1st, 2018 through January 31st, 2019. The estimated cost of the county, which includes a price increase, is not to exceed $5,500. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the contract with Murphy Tractor and Equipment. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Q or amendments to the following contracts to provide the annual supply of ice melt. The amendments renew the contracts for a term beginning in February 18th, 2018 through February 17th, 2019. And this includes county contract C-17-182 with Helena Chemical Company in an amount not to exceed $3,500. County contract C-17-183 with Nebraska Landscape Solutions, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $3,500. And county contract C-17-184 with Omaha Paper Company in an amount not to exceed $3,000. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have uh, a motion and a second to amend uh, three contracts for the annual supply of ice melt. Any discussion? Commissioner Avery? I have a question. I'm curious as to how and why a paper company is selling ice melt. That doesn't sound normal. <laughs> Diversification, I assume. Could be. I'm not going to vote against it, but I just find that strange. I, I would, yeah, I would agree. Probably diversification and the fact that sometimes business names don't coincide with what they actually do. And so I, I'm assuming that maybe there's money to be made and ice melt. Maybe they started out and with paper and wound up with ice. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Uh, please call the roll. Sure. Um, Yes. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Wilton? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Their website says that they provide janitorial supplies, so that must be that's part of the paper connection. Is. That's the paper connection. Next is number five, public comment. Those wishing to speak on items relating to county business, not on the agenda, may do so at this time. Hey, anyone in the audience wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda? Okay, Mr. Clerk, please continue with the announcements. 
The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold a staff meeting on Thursday, January 25th, 2018 at 8.30 a.m. in the Bill Luxford studio of the County City Building. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners will hold their next regular meeting on Tuesday, January 30th, 2018 at 9 a.m. in room 112 of the County City Building. The County Commissioners can be reached at 402-441-7447 or commish at lancaster.ne.gov. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners meeting is broadcast live on Link TV City. For the rebroadcast schedule, visit lincoln.ne.gov. Meetings are also streamed live on Link TV and can be viewed on YouTube. I move we adjourn. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, please call the roll. Amundsen? Yes. Avery? Yes. Brinkman? Yes. Shore? Yes. Wilchin? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Okay, that concludes the county board meeting. Have a good week.